Welcome to everybody to our online broadcast worship experience. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We just want to appreciate and love on you guys so much for tuning in today and coming in and worshiping God in His, in his presence and His spirit of holiness and just unity and glory and honor. We want to give Him glory. We want to give Him praise, give Him honor. We want to welcome all of you. Listen, today is a great day. Today is a day of freedom, deliverance, wholeness, soundness, nothing missing, broken or lacking. And um, you see, I got my jersey on. I'm rocking the jersey today. Today we is Super Bowl Sunday. And so usually every Super Bowl Sunday, we rock our jeans. We used to call it jeans, jerseys, and Jesus Day. So well, we just rock our jerseys and represent our team. So that's why I got my jersey on today. I'm a Cowboys man. So I'm repping today. And so, hey, we just uh, want you to go ahead and just get yourself prepared to receive. For any of our first time visitors, we want to just acknowledge you today. If this is your very first time um, tuning in and attending a service here online on our virtual platform, we just want to acknowledge you. If that's you and this is your first time, and I know sometimes people don't want to be acknowledged and things of that nature, but we just want to say how much we love you and appreciate you. So you can just shoot us a message um, in the comments section. Just say, hey, I'm a first timer. And so we just want to acknowledge you and love on you and appreciate you for tuning in today. So all of our Spirit of Fire Nation, go ahead if, um, and let people know, hey, tune in. It's time. Pastor's on. It's time to go ahead and get that word. God wants you to get this message today. I'm excited about what he's dropped in my heart to share. We're continuing on our series dealing. Um, I started dealing with the believer's authority and dealing with who are you. But today I want to give it a, a different title. Um, that's something that just dropped in my heart even last night as I was sitting and praying and just listening. And um, I want to before I share what that is. I want us to have a word of prayer. So let's go ahead and pray. I want you to go ahead. But before we do that, go ahead and share this message on your social media platforms. Let people know that, um, that we're on now. I'm telling you, it's going to bless their life. Invite somebody to come in now. OK, invite them to come in now. Praise God. All right. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think through my mind to minister your word with simplicity and understanding. Thank you, Father, that I preach prophetically and teach practically. I thank you for every ear anointed to hear this word, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you for it. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We speak life, health, strength to each and every individual. Now, under the sound of my voice, we thank you. We thank you that it is well with them. <clears throat> we give you praise, glory and honor for it. Father, thank you that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened today, that we may know, Father, what is the hope of your calling. We thank you right now and the riches of the glory of the inheritance that we have as saints and believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you that I'm cloaked with the anointing to remove every burden, to destroy every yoke, even as Jesus spoke. For the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. And so I thank you for your word coming forth with, with power, with might, with precision. That not only will it stimulate it and motivate but it'll transform and change. Father, this is the assignment that you've given unto me. And I thank you right now. And I pray that this anointing begins to grow and increase and the revelation and the wisdom begins to be maximized. Potency in the spirit. We come against every principality and power right now. Every ruler of darkness in this world, wicked spirits in high and heavenly places, we render you harmless and ineffective against us now in Jesus' name. Shebran Maso Tokumbre, Shokonov, thank you, Father, that we shatter every limitation, every ceiling, every cap that a person has put on their lives, every lid that has been put on people's lives is shattered today in Jesus' name. We give you praise and glory for it. Now let the church say amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, 
the message, if, to give it a title for today, is simple as I was sitting, and this just dropped into my spirit, dropped into my heart, in my mind, however you want to say it. But the, the, the title simply dropped into me, it's time to dominate. It's time to dominate. <clears throat> no matter what situation you're dealing with, no matter what circumstances have come your way, you have authority, you have dominion, you have power. You and I have this authority that's been granted and given unto us. And you say, Pastor, we, we hear you talk about dominion and authority and power a lot because that's the assignment that God has given me. He says, go teach my people who they are. And as I begin to sit, I begin to look over some notes and I, I came across a note that as I was in prayer, I began to write down. And the spirit of God told me, go teach the principles of my kingdom, teach my people that they are citizens before they are members. They are citizens of heaven before they are identified as a member of a church or an institution or an organization. You can bring it on down. And so now he says this, I need for them to begin to understand their identity in me before they identify with anything or anybody else. They have to know who I made them to be, who I created them to be. And it's always been God's original design for us to have dominion in this earth and to be fruitful and to multiply, to subdue and to replenish. And he blessed his creation and empowered us for success to live out the dream that he has for us to have fellowship with him and to rule and reign with him throughout eternity. So, but when sin entered into the picture or the equation, there was a disconnect between God and man and Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. But Jesus came to reestablish that connection, which was the original intended plan in the garden for us to dominate, to rule, to replenish, to expand what God started and so we need to begin to look at this accountability fact and to see in order to see what he wants us to do. Let's go back to the original plan. Let's go back to the original intent. In the book of Genesis, chapter two, verse one, and I'm, I'm going to read through this now. I'm, I don't know how much I'm going to get through today, but I need to begin to sow this in, in a different way to you. And I'm going to start at verse one. And it says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, so this is after this is after God has done creating the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord um, God had made the heavens and the earth and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man, because remember, he says there was no man to till the earth. There was no man, in other words, to take care of his creation. And so he says now, he says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So God placed him in a specific geographic location. He placed him in the place that he wanted him to be because he had already shown part of his heartbeat as to the reason why he even formed the man was to continue the work and to take care of the creation that he made. And he wanted to create a family for himself. And so he wanted to create man to have fellowship with him. But now he gave him a specific assignment. And he says, watch this. And so now, and whom he had formed, verse nine, and out of the ground, 
God ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. From thence it was parted and became into four heads, four streams, four rivers. The name of the first is Pison. This is that which compasseth um, the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Dilium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon, which is which um, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river, Hedekel, that is it which goeth forth, um, goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So he put him there to say, OK, I want you to tend this land. I want you to cultivate this land. But then the second part of it to keep it means to guard it. I want you to develop it, but I also want you to guard what you're developing. So when God placed Adam in the garden, now, why is this so specific? He told us God is telling us that he put him in a place of abundance. He put him in a place where there was gold, dillium, the onyx stone. So why would he even God even mention this to us? Why is he even showing us this? His original intent, he put man in abundance. He never started him in lack. He started him in abundance. He started him having opulence and more than enough. He put him in a lavish place where the rivers begin to go out. Remember this, it was a natural irrigation system where the mist came up to water the earth. This is before rain was ever introduced into the picture. And so now it, it listen, it was designed to take care of itself. He put him in a lush place, a, 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 a productive place. And he wanted him to produce. He wanted man to tend the garden. He wanted him to take care of it. Now, watch. Let's continue here. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying. Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. All right. I will make a help meet or suitable or adaptive form. And out of the ground, and this is interesting. Now it says this, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. Now I'm getting ready to get into something here that he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name of it thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet or suitable or adaptive form. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took up a, a one of the ribs and closed up the flesh. So now he did this. He now forms and takes out the rib and now forms Eve and brings Eve unto him. OK, then he realizes and says, OK, now this and Adam said this is now in verse 23. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. Then it just says, therefore, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now, watch this. God created Adam and put him in the garden after he was finished creating the environment to place him in with the purpose of cultivating or growing it and also protecting and guarding it. So we should protect the thing, like I said, that we are growing and developing. Now, in verse 19, God creates the animal kingdom and brings them to Adam to name. Watch this, which uses his funk, his brain capacity and functionality, his cognitive skills and imagination were unbridled and unlimited. There was no cap on him. 
There was no, see, he was not limited by previous knowledge. He was created, put in a lavish place with the ability created in God's image and after his likeness. And watch this. The Bible did not say what God named. He said whatever Adam called it. That's what it was. That's the authority that he turned over to his man, Adam, because he gave him the responsibility. I started this thing, but I want you to take it further. You've been created in my image and after my likeness and the same thing that's in me, I've placed in you because I breathed into you the breath of life. I put myself in you and now have given you and released you. Watch this. God never gave him any other instruction but to tend it, to take care of it, to cultivate it. And so he knew he placed within Adam everything that was needed for him to carry out the assignment that he gave him. And so when he placed Adam here, you got to think about this. Think about every animal that there is. Because when you call a thing and you speak to a thing, you not only give it a name, but you give it its identity. And when you give it its identity, you give it its functionality. And so everything was, listen, this wasn't God doing it. You better hear me. This was Adam doing it. Some of y'all hear this. Some of you got what I'm saying. See, you looking for God to do something he created and anointed you to do. You have this authority to speak and to create and to continue the assignment of subduing, replenishing, dominating, being productive, being fruitful, multiplying. And he says this, I want you, watch this, and this is something I saw as I was reading it. I want you to cultivate it, but I also want you to guard it. This is what we see in the earth today, that through the mismanagement of the cultivation of the planet, that there are certain things that are happening to the planet because of the greed of men, because they've mismanaged the assignment that God gave Adam in the beginning. And so now we see the earth groaning in travail because people aren't doing the thing that originally God created them to do. You got You got to hear me with this. People have used their ability to be productive, but yet at the same time, destroying the thing that they're supposed to be producing on. This is, see, as I start seeing this in a different light now, that not only has God given us power and ability, but responsibility. That God wants us to produce, to grow, but to set up systems to protect the thing that we're growing. And so when God gives you wisdom, let me break it down even more simplified. When he tells you to start the business, when he tells you to start the ministry, when he tells you to start the assignment, he's given you the ability to grow, to develop and to now cultivate that thing. But he says, I need for you to be wise enough to set up systems and parameters and borders to protect the thing that you're growing and developing so that the enemy can't come in through ignorance, through scheming, through whatever, because of ignorance of not knowing something that you have to produce at a high level because I created you to produce at a high level. Let me, I'm trying to get to a play. I'm trying to take my time to get there. He said, you got to think bigger, think better about yourself so that you can understand you've been created to be a production center in this earth. In your spirit is the assignment I've given you. It's the vision I've given you. And what you see on the inside is supposed to be produced on the outside. That's what vision is. And now as a leader in the vision that God has given you, it is your job to lead the thing forward to produce what you see. Okay. God will bring something to you and say, what do you call it? Ah, you better hear me. He, uh, he said, it, it's, not, a, it's not, not what I say. What do you say? <sighs> because remember, in Matthew 18, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. In other words, whatever you don't permit, I won't permit. Whatever you do, I will. 
You have to realize I've released this authority to you for you to go forth and to be productive, but you're hiding the productivity that's in you. You're hiding the abilities that are in you because whether it's through ignorance or fear, which ignorance will produce fear. Because if you don't know something, you are less likely to step out on it because you're not confident because of lack of knowledge. This is why (laughs) lack of knowledge, people perish, lack of vision, people perish because you see no direction. And so if you see no direction, you don't know how to function in the fullness of who you really are. And he says this. He told Adam, Adam, whatever you name it. Whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be from this moment forward. When you see giraffe, because you said it's giraffe, that's what it is. Because you say it's hippopotamus, that's what it is. Because you said it's elephant, that's what it is. I've given you to function. Watch this. Oh, Lord. Lord, help me. Help me with this. Because when I start tapping into these areas, I feel like there's going to be an outbreak, an explosion of such wisdom, knowledge, understanding, skillfulness, imagination. See, you have to have, oh man. See, this is why children have such an active imagination when they're born into this earth. They were born to produce. They were born to see things beyond what currently is. They'll have imaginary friends and they'll see themselves flying. They'll see themselves doing. And what happens is because of the sinfulness of man's nature, the fall of man, man's ability to think and to produce at 100 percent capacity has dwindled down because now the sin nature has entered into the picture, but Jesus came to redeem us, to get us back and to reconnect us so that we can now take off the limitations and the walls of containment and to think bigger, better, and brighter than ever before. Okay. It takes ingenuity and creativity to create an airplane. It takes ingenuity and create, what? Oh Lord. Whatever we as believers consume, we should be providing. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see. You got to get out of this, just this consumer mentality and now turn into a producer. That we produce and provide. Why does the world who has no covenant with our God? Okay, let me, let me, uh, there's so much running through me. I got to take this. I got to take it slow. I got to take it slow. I got to take it slow. I got to take it slow because I got to sow it into you. God blessed man in the beginning to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, have dominion, replenish the earth. When sin entered, there was a disconnect. Christ came to reconnect, take care of the sin issue. Okay. When he left, he tag teamed with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit comes in, visits the church, comes to live and dwell in us as the body of Christ. Jesus sits on the throne. Watch it. Oh, Lord, because it's finished. Just like when God finished, he rested in the beginning and put Adam in a finished work. Glory to God. He gave Adam everything he needed. And said, now it's your job to go and to take it further. Image bearer, you created in my image, just like my child, my children. My children should go further than my wife and I have gone. And we should set up, we should set a platform for them to accelerate and to grow. And God did the same thing for us. There are people who are living, man, I feel like ripping this thing here. Oh, Lord. There are people who are living in poverty that don't have to. There are people who are living beneath privileges when you don't have to. You are a production center. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I don't want to feel like I'm all over the place. But it's so much running through me. You're trying to pull from sources or resources when, oh Lord, help me, help me articulate this. You are pulling when you should be producing. You are consuming when you should be supplying. If you take on that attitude, 
your imagination and creativity will begin to grow and flourish because you'll come from the place of not what can I get from people, but what can I give to people? And when you start thinking as a giver versus a receiver, because the receiving gonna take care of itself, if you start looking as a producer, now all of a sudden, all types of creative ideas will come to you and begin to show you what you need to do because you're tapping to the original blessing that God put on man when he placed us here. Oh, Jesus, come on, come on now. Not only that, you receive the Holy Spirit. Who is God manifested here with us and sown into us? Remember, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These three are one. And now he's come to live in us as the church to flow through us. And we're to go forth and to produce. And Lord Jesus, God wants to wreck the ignorance of people who are born again, blood washed believers. This generation, I'm telling you, I'm telling you now, this newer generation, they ready to roll. They, they want to produce I'm, who I'm preaching to. I'm preaching to them, but I'm also preaching to some of the older saints where now you so used to just receiving the word, getting excited about it, but never setting the goals, the plans and the objectives and the consistent actions to produce what God placed in you. It is time for you to produce. And I'm calling forth that baby. I'm calling forth that plan that has been gathering dust in your mind over the years and that God begin will begin to wipe that thing out. And that you will produce in an older age and that you will begin to produce whether it's younger or whether it's older, older. I'm calling you forth in Jesus name to produce everything and to manifest everything that God has placed in you. This is your time to shine. And I'm calling for that sleeping giant in you to rise. I speak to the baby, Elizabeth. I speak to that baby in you and the baby and the anointing in me is speaking to the baby in you and that baby will not be stillborn, but I commanded to come forth in Jesus name and every image that you've been seeing for your life. I commanded to shift, to align itself with the word of God and the word of grace and the word that God has placed within you that you will begin to dream, see, and to experience the goodness of God, the greatness of God like you've never seen before. All right. All right. All right. I want you to go somewhere with me. I want you to go to the book of Daniel real quick. The book of Daniel chapter one. Huh? So um, I didn't have an opportunity to get this uh, media team, but I, listen, I want y'all to go there with me. I want y'all, we will put it in the chat so that y'all can pull it up. I want you to pull this up. I'm going to start in Daniel chapter one, verses four through eight, and then I'll deal with 17 through 20. And so now, well, I'll just start reading a little bit. I'll start in verse one real quick. Let me see my time. Okay. I got enough to deal with this. It says, and in the third year, I'm starting in verse one, in the reign of uh, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, uh, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave uh, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Okay. And the king spake unto uh, uh, Ashpenaz and master of his, uh, of the eunuchs, the master of the eunuchs and watch this, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the chi of the king's seed and of the princes children. Now, now this is what I want to really kind of hit and start dealing with children. This is the children of Israel, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge. So these are people, I mean, these are kids that they, they, they possess great knowledge, great wisdom and great understanding. Watch this and understanding in science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So they trying to get the best of the best so that they, they can put their ways into them to now begin to produce and to do what they need to do. Watch this. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, 
so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. So he wanted to now get this test group. He wanted to grab people from Israel, God's chosen people that he wanted to take from them and begin to pour into them for three years, his ways. You better hear me. You better hear me. You better hear me. Satan has done that in the earth where he has grabbed people of great insight, wisdom and knowledge that God has grace, but has now nourished them in his kingdom, in the Babylonian system, in the way of the world system. And now God is saying this, I'm going to begin. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he says, I'm getting ready now to bring in and to raise up people in my system, in my way of doing things to release them into the earth. But I, I want to, before we get there, before we get there, and he says this, I'm going to teach them in the tongues of the Chaldeans and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. And I read that for three years, verse six. And now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. So this is where we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come from. And so watch this. Now watch this. This is going to be important. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now watch this. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. So Daniel is saying this, out of the four of them, he's making a stand. I don't want to defile myself by taking on what you're telling me to do. The prince, he's now negotiating with the prince in this situation. Now watch this. And so God gave him favor in the prince's sight. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, verse 10, I fear my Lord, the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children that are of your sort? So he says this. If you don't do what the king says, you're going to look worse than the ones that's doing it. And so now watch this. Then shall you make me endangered my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzer, he says, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Now he says this, okay. He says, hold on. He, he's negotiating. So he says, instead of us eating the king's meat and drinking the king's wine, Give us 10 days. Let us eat vegetables and water and drink water. Let us, let's, let, let's, we're going to have a different diet than what you all are doing. We're going to eat different than what you're doing. Now he's talking about physical meat, physical food here. Yet at the same time, you got to see the understanding or the correlation or the principle here. We'll take God's principle. You take yours. And let us come back together after 10 days and see the difference between the two. Okay, 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 come on. And he says this in verse 13. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he says, okay. So he consented to them in this matter. Verse 14 and prove them 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer, appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzer took away the portion of their meat and the, and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse or gave them vegetables. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge, skill, and all learning. So you got to understand this. I, I want you to start looking deeper. I want you to start thinking. Watch this. It's skill in all learning or skill in all literature. So now not only now, we're not just talking about the spiritual aspect of these individuals, these children. These are young men here. 
but now their minds are sharper. Their minds are clearer. Watch this. And so now they think better. They function better. They produce better. And watch this. And wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of days. Oh, man, I want to go somewhere with this real quick. Now at the end of the days that the king has said he should bring them in. Then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar and the king communed with them. So he spent time with them. Man, glory to God. He examined them. He literally talked to them to kind of see and he interacted. And I'm telling you, God is getting ready to now present some of you to people in areas who don't know your God, who don't think about serving your God. And God is going to give you opportunity to commune and to talk and to now deal with people in different spheres and areas and avenues. And watch this. They're going to begin to see that the time that you commune with your God, that's been different from everything they've done and all the education they've received. Not only have you received education in the natural, but you got education in the spirit and the spirit is going to enhance or come upon or the supernatural above the natural. And they're going to see that you function at a greater level than they function. I'm, you better come on. You better get ready to hear. You better hear what the Lord is telling you now. Now watch this. And he communed with them and among them also was found none. There was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. He's going to bring you before great men. He's going to bring you before kings. He's going to bring you before those in leadership that you're going to be kingdom influencers. You're going to be kingdom leaders. And God wants to now show the world what his children can do when they fully yield themselves to my my way, my will, my way of doing things. And so he's saying this, it is time for you. You better, man, you better hear what I'm telling you. You better get ready. Not only were they developed in their mind, they are developed. Now watch this. And they are functioning under a lesser covenant than you and I have. They did not have the spirit of God. They did not have the spirit of grace abiding on the inside of them. But you and I do. And you need to tap into this. Watch now. Let me finish. Let me finish before I get to, to speaking. And watch this. And watch this. And they stood before the king. Verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom and in all matters. And in all matters and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians, all the astrologers that were in his realm. So his whole staff, his team, he sees these group of guys come in. And now as he inquires of them, he's grilling them. He's drilling them. He's asking questions of them. And watch this. He sees that they are 10 times greater than anybody he has on his staff. You got to understand this. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. God is saying this. You got to take this now. You got to take this that they now chose to submit themselves and not commune or take part of what the king, his meat, the king's drink. He says, I'm not drinking a your Kool-Aid. I'm going to go ahead. Let me do what I do. Let me go ahead and now put in my body what I need to put in my body. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I want to show you something. He was confident and knew that they were going to be better after this transaction had taken place. And you're going to have to be confident in the God that you know, because what sometimes, oh Lord, what many people have been doing, they've been eating the king's meat, but then try to come and eat the vegetables at the same time. And so now you are not producing and functioning at a high level because you're trying to dip in one and dip in the other at the same time. And God is saying this, I need you to be all in with me and I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you what I can produce through you and in you. Now, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me settle down and let me say it like this. You got to be mindful who you're listening to. There are many people who are listening to people that they deem successful because of financial gain that they receive. Financial gain is a part of successful living, but it's not the totality of it. And these are people that you got to be mindful and be you got you got to be mindful. 
You have to be mindful because sometimes how it's wrapped can seem so similar that you are now feeding from the king's table when you should be feeding from God's supply and his spirit. And so even though this person says do this, but the Holy Ghost says do this. But see, because you can't see the Holy Ghost, but you see this dude flying in this jet posting on social media. So now you're going to lean more towards him versus what God is saying. And if you don't watch now, you are deadening or dumbing down the glory that's supposed to be flowing through you. That's supposed to now come to that person and now convince them that my way is better because now my way is God's way. You like, man, you. OK, OK, OK. Okay. 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 No. Yeah. 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 Shokore shikana. Shokore shikana. Shokore shikana. This is a time where people are coming out of hiding. Christians. Some Christians have not been sharing what they know to share because they're they are intimidated by the people they're talking to. I'm about ready to throw my dog on iPad. I see this thing so strong. You're going to have to rise up as to who you are into the rooms that God is going to send you in because he has prepared you behind the scenes and you have been feeding off his word and feeding off his spirit that you're going to have to say, thus saith the Lord. And you ain't going to have to be, you can't be afraid to speak truth to power because God is going to back up your words in every meeting you about to go into. And he's going to give you a grace that will astound the minds. He says, I'll give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of the your adversaries shall be able to gain say nor resist and the wisdom of God is going to flow through you because the spirit of wisdom the spirit of counsel the spirit of knowledge and understanding the fear of the Lord and you're going to be cunning and crafty in all that you do listen Lord Jesus you're about to say I'm telling you now you're about to say something God is going to now create new platforms for you you are going to experience new platforms. You are going to experience new things. God is saying you looking to now go on somebody else's platform. He says, I'm going to create your own platform and you can't worry about that any longer. I'm creating something in you and through. Don't worry about it. I'll get another one, doggone it. Listen, I'm telling you, the power of God, the grace of God is on you and he's going to take you to new heights. He's going to take you to new levels and you got to now experience. You cannot be afraid any longer. You cannot be afraid. I'm telling you, God has taken off the spirit of fear off of you right now. And you got to go boldly. You better go boldly. You better go stronger than you ever been before in your life. I'm telling you, I am telling you. You better hear with the eye of God. I'm not coming to you as a pastor. I'm coming to you now as a mouthpiece of the oracles of the almighty God. And he is saying now the wind of my spirit is blowing upon your plans now. And there's going to be a readjustment of things. And now you will have to go back and relook at things that you've never seen before that you saw. You wrote down some stuff, but you never brought your plans to me, says the Lord. He says, if you come back to me, I'm going to show you and there's going to be a recalibration of some things. And this time around, I will breathe upon it and the acceleration shall take place in the name of Jesus. And you shall move swifter. You shall move faster. You shall move greater. And I'm going to amplify your thinking. I'm going to amplify your imagination. I'm going to amplify your creativity and watch what I begin to do with you in these last days. Okay, you, I'm telling you, you better hear what I'm telling you. You better hear what I'm telling you. You better hear what I'm telling you. The glory of God is hitting this earth like never before. The glory of God is hitting this earth like never before. The glory is hitting this earth like never before. I'm telling you, it's time to produce. It's time. It's time for our children to be 10 times greater. It's time. There will be schools and new schools being created. There will be new curriculums created because the ones that's currently out there ain't doing the job. It ain't doing the job to the. See, there are people who are now being conformed to this world through education. They are being conformed to think one way. And God is saying, uh, uh I need new educational platforms. Will you do it? 
I need you to create things to now bring children through so that I can develop them for every mountain of influence that I've called for them to go into and that they will be now developed and curriculums developed and skill sets developed to push them and to get them on the fast track to the area I've called them to be in. So not only, and they'll be 10 times greater and they listen, if this could happen then, why can it not happen now when you're under a better covenant established upon better promises? And so you got to understand this, that the spirit that was upon Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is within you. In deposit, ready to be, be released at any time. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. Put your hands on your head right now. Wherever you are, I want you to put your hands and I want you to say this. Say, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. Say, I think creatively. My imagination is great. My cognitive skills are excellent. I think properly. I comprehend with excellence. <laughs> Whoo, my thinking is accelerating even now. Glory to God. Whoo, Lord, stretch our imagination. Yes, shatter every limitation, God. Shatter every limitation. Shatter every limitation. Whoo, Jesus. Whoo, Jesus. Whoo, Jesus. Shekumbre shetekumba, badisite. Producers of wealth. Producers of life, producers of excellence, productivity like never before. Some of you need to change your environments, even in your home. Set your homes up for you to think better, for you to live better, organize. You need to organize, brainstorm, wisdom, wisdom. God is going to drop gems in you while you're sleeping. And you got to be ready to capture it when you wake up. Some things going to be so vivid. I mean, he's going to give you new formulas. I'm telling you, man, y'all better, y'all better send this to as many people as you can. I'm telling you, because God is going to now stimulate the minds and the spirits of his people. You prayed in the Holy Ghost, but now what you prayed in the spirit is going to begin to illuminate your thinking and your soul is going to expand greater. And you're going to think things greater. And oh, Lord, man, he, Lord Jesus, I mean, different perspectives, insights, wisdom, knowledge and understanding, man, new ways of thinking creativity man i'm telling you who lord i mean some of you oh lord lord jesus some of y'all need to form think tanks well listen you one of your greatest one of your greatest assets is for you to have the ability to sit still and think and as you sit still and think things ideas will drop into you not just drop into you forgive me will come up out of you yeah, for out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, life producing, agricultural, I mean irrigation systems, new ways of producing produce, productivity. I mean, I'm telling you, warehouses, farmlands. I mean, there's some of you, you'll begin to create your own food supplies, own energy resources. I'm telling you, I'm talking about energy plants, things where you will now tap into the deep recesses of the soil of the land and begin to pull up. Oh man, I hope I'm not speaking over your heads right now. Y'all got to come with me now. You got to come with me now. You got to think different now. You got to think different now. You got to produce different now. This ain't just about coming to a church and shouting for 30 minutes and go home and you still living at a low level. You got to think different and stop just admiring people who are out there producing and doing when God called you to be a part of the plan that he wants you to now help. He wants you to develop. He wants you. You might be the person who's been called to cultivate the next creative and great minds in this earth, but God will give you wisdom to be that prayer warrior, that intercessor, that caregiver, whoever it is. God is saying this, protect the seed that is around you. I hear this in my spirit. Protect the seed that's the 
seeds that are around you, the children that are around you, the seed that's in you, protected, guarded, cultivated. So listen, when that child tells you that they think it's something astronomical, don't you dare dumb them down. Don't you dare speak down to what they dreaming about. God saying this, I want you to resurrect your dream and I'm going to jolt you in the spirit and I'm going to cause you to shake rather than roll and I'm going to strip every negative influence from around you because God is saying this, because my will has to be done. If you don't protect and guard, I will send them elsewhere to people that will cultivate and nurture. And Satan has been doing this for years. He has been robbing and stealing creative minds to build his kingdom. But no more. I declare that the kingdom of God is rising, that the kingdoms of our of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God. And we are building greater. We are thinking broader. We are thinking deeper in Jesus name. Somebody agree with me. You type amen. I don't know y'all. I can't see y'all right now, but I'm telling you, I'm sensing you in the spirit. I knew something was attacking. I could literally sense. I felt like something was trying to hinder me from releasing this word. I could feel the pressure in this. I don't know what it is because I know what it is. I know because I'm going to teach on it. I'll probably do it next week dealing with the four classifications of demonic forces. And so they are in the earth trying to shut down the church. But I'm telling you, we breaking out in the power of the spirit. Glory to God. And we are raised up unto our God and we are seated together in heaven places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo, Jesus. I'm telling you, supernatural and miraculous works are at hand. Creativity. Oh, Lord, I hit it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. There are antidotes that have already been created that people are blocking now. That people have bought the patents to block it from coming into the earth so that they can now create them, get the money off of it because they know if the antidote is released, it'll now cut into trillions, even billions of dollars that they've been receiving in these areas. And I pray now that those things are revealed to the general public. And I declare now that even though an antidote is trying to be hindered, I declare new ones will be released now in Jesus name. And father, also that your anointing and your power will come upon your people to eradicate sickness and disease. Now in Jesus name, some of you will begin to grow cultivate gardens where you will eat the fresh fruits and vegetables of those gardens. I keep seeing agriculture, agriculture, sowing into agriculture, investing into proper agriculture because yeah, it's the love of money that's produced. It's the root to all evil, the love, that wrong attachment to it, which has caused men and women to be wicked behind the scenes. But God is re he's growing up. He's been raising up for some time now men and women who learn the systems and now will begin to produce and cultivate this earth in a greater way. You hear what I'm telling you? This is a new, this is a new, this, I mean, Lord, this is a, who my thought patterns are increasing. My wave is just, it's, it's, it's the more, the more, the more, the more, the more. This is why you need to understand the grace of God. This is why you need to understand his mercy. You need to understand the power of the blood of Jesus. You need to understand that we are the righteousness of God because God is doing this. There are men and women. See, they not, see, they've been sick of religion, but not necessarily relationship. They want relationship with their heavenly father. They want to experience the greatness, but they just hate the limitations that the laws of religion have placed. And you got to understand that Jesus came to fulfill the law so that now watch this. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. The law was perfect, but it was for sinful man. And so now to tell man about his sinful ways, but it couldn't do nothing about it. Jesus came to fulfill it. His blood was shed. And he says, all are included with this thing now. And he says this, I'm telling you, there are such creative minds that the church has run off. And now they are trying to connect with people that will receive the gifts that are in them and the abilities that are in them. Them. And I'm telling you now, things are changing for the good. I'm telling you, they're changing for the good. Some people are saying, well, why ain't you preaching on sin no more? Why ain't you doing this stuff? Because preaching on the sin will bring an awareness of sin or a sin consciousness, but preaching the righteousness of God will cause you to be more aware of your righteousness. And the Bible says, awaken unto righteousness and sin not. 
Paul had to deal with sin in the Corinthian church. Why am I talking about? I'm just going to share it. He dealt with sin in the Corinthian church because things were going off. Yes, there are times you have to say, this thing shouldn't be named among you. You know better than that. Get back into your righteousness. Understand that you're the righteousness of God and the sin that you've been committing will begin to cease and stop. And you will now realize, wait a minute, because I'm righteous, because God has graced me, because he has forgiven me, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Some of you have been trying to send folk to hell in a handbasket by talking down on them. But if you would just demonstrate the love of God, you will love the hell right out of them and they'll come right back into the fold and receive God's goodness and begin to utilize the gifts, talents and abilities to advance the kingdom of God versus advancing Satan's agenda. And I'm telling you now, there is about to be a sweep across this country in this nation alone and in other nations. It will take place. But in this nation, there will be a sweeping of the glory of God and there will be great repentance that takes place. And and great glory that comes because many men and women will finally submit themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and say, God, here am I, send me, here am I, utilize me. And there will be such creativity in the area of art. I'm telling you, technology is about to go through the roof and see some people are scared of it, but God is saying, I need you to use it for my glory because it's coming. It's already here. It's already manifesting. So instead of now backing off, he says, you need to engage that culture with my power and with my glory and begin to see the transformative work of the grace and the gospel of the grace of God. And you will begin to see men and women transform and change. God is already working on the hearts of many now that you've been praying for, but you didn't know how to deal with them. And I'm telling you now, the limitations are off. The limitations are off. The limitations are off. And you about to fly in the spirit. You better hear me when I'm telling you now. You are flying in the spirit, not running, but flying in the spirit. You are soaring above every turbulence. You are soaring above every problem. You are soaring above every situation. He says, Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You are already seated together with me in heavenly places. I feel my help coming on me. Glory to God. And he says, I'm going to shatter every wicked device. I'm going to drive out every perverse spirit. I'm going to now create and change things in your environment and you will see my power and glory in Jesus name. And I'm done. Glory to God. Glory to God, Lord Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. <sighs> Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you glory. We give you glory. I command. I speak. Now I do this by demonstration. You get the image, which is the vision, to speak out of your mouth. But you meditated on it long enough for it to get in your heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I speak forth new buildings now that have already been built and created. New office spaces that have already been created. New rooms, podcast rooms, rooms, meeting rooms and spaces. Warehouses, gymnasiums, things of that nature. Yeah, Romo, Shekana, uh-huh. Grocery stores new economies and systems created. We call forth it now in Jesus name that the kingdom of God is now building and building and advancing and beginning. And there will be a great transference of land, a great transference of land and even natural resources on that land will begin to be produced to have great sustainability. That as we begin to grow, sustainability, self-sustained, self-sufficient, producing enough to provide, yeah, to require no aid or support, but furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Some of you have been thinking too low with that scripture. You've been thinking too low with that scripture. You're just thinking about your immediate household, your immediate needs. God is talking about even captains of industry. He's talking about you producing land, you creating businesses, you creating jobs, economy. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, zip codes. I'm talking about you creating land. I'm talking about cities being created. See, y'all got, y'all, <laughs> you, come on now, y'all got to get me, get with me. I'm, who Jesus, who Jesus, who Jesus. 
Echete te kobase. Masse, 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 masse. Kopate kede. Mukum mate geshe de dobo. Shatada de baj le kene ne nebre. Shande de dobro. Higher, higher, and higher, and higher, and higher, and higher, and higher, and higher. She kobate she de kumba. Mate kumba. Yeah. Production. Yeah, Lord, Lord Jesus. God, glory. This is why great partnerships shall begin to take place. And this person brings their stream. Ha <laughs> ha, glory. And this person brings their stream together. And it produces a mighty rushing ocean and flood. And many will come together. Some unlikely pairings. Oh, Shekana. Not only does the transference of wealth mean the finances or the resources, but also the knowledge, intellectual property. You, you, you got the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. I know there are many people feeling, fearing artificial intelligence. And it, it, it unsettles many of you. But you got to get ready for what God is getting ready to do with it. Currency is being changed and shifted right before our very eyes. And you got to get ready. Because God, God is going to create some instant millionaires. But you got to be ready to handle it. See, this is why you got to be ready to now create the systems to handle the weight of the glory that's being released. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> thinking higher, thinking greater. I come against the spirit of poverty in these areas. There's such a heaviness and a weightiness in certain demographic locations. We come against the spirit of racism, which is division magnified in hate and ignorance. I'm telling you, you're going to begin to see new developments from unlikely sources. New developments. It's already happening. It's already happening. This anointing is coming strong. Y'all got to I know y'all receiving. I can tell the way it's on me. My job is to release it. Glory to God. So Father, we bless you. We glorify you. Now Father, we give you praise. We received the word of the Lord. We thank you for the impartation that took place. This was impartation that took place today. And even helping to transform the thinking of individuals to think greater, bigger, better, broader. Thank you, Lord. New exposures. Exposure to greater. Exposure to greater. You will not die prematurely. You will not die until the fulfillment of the promise is manifested. I don't know who that's for, but uh -uh. I speak that. I speak it. I got not being mixed with faith that didn't profit them. You got to believe it. Receive it. Believe it. Expect it. But begin to think it. I know for some of you it's different. Some of you it could be a fearful thing. Because you're not used to walking in those circles. There's help coming. I hear that. There's help coming. A word that God gave me some years ago. That God will give you divine escorts. Into your new seasons. Receive them. Receive them. When I bring them. To give you new knowledge and new information. I know that sometimes in areas that we're ignorant in, there's a tendency to back away from it because you don't want to feel less than. You got to get rid of that pride. That's the pride of life. It'll hinder you receiving what you need. Receive the wisdom that God is releasing and the people he's bringing across your path. Now, if there's anybody here under the sound of my voice, 
that's never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to go ahead and repeat this prayer after me. Come on into the kingdom. Come on in. Come on in and receive this grace, this power that's available to you. I want you to make this confession of your faith. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, glory to God, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. And I know it. Now fill me, Holy Spirit. I receive you to come on the inside of me. Fill me with power, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, the fear of the Lord. The spirit of might. Make my body alive. Illuminate my mind. Huh. Let every proton, neutron, electron fire properly. Huh. My brain cells function at high capacity. Oxygen levels flowing freely in my body. Man, glory to God. I declare, who Jesus. They say they begin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who Jesus. Uh -huh. The glory is here. The glory is there. Wherever you are, the glory is there. The power is manifesting. You are saved. You're born again. The people that made that confession, you're born again. You feel with the Holy Spirit now. He abides on the inside of you. Dwelling in you, living in you. He is your helper. He is your comforter. He is your strengthener. He is the one ready to give you peace, to grant you wisdom, to help you to pray out things that you don't know how to pray for as you are. But then you can begin to pray in the spirit, your heavenly prayer language to begin to pray. And I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. There may be somebody also under the sound of my voice that you don't have a church home. That it's important for you to connect and to have community and to have family because we are not created to do life by ourselves. That's why he created the local church for the development of his body to go forth into the earth. If that's you, we would love to be your pastors, to love on you, to help develop you in the things of God, to help push you into your destiny and purpose. If that's you, you don't have, and you, you feeling that pull and that tug, I feel like I'm supposed to do it, but I'm kind of hesitant. Make the choice. See, see, that's the spirit of containment trying to hold you back. Come on, make the decision today. If that's you, we want you to go ahead and send us a message at info at spiritify.us, info at spiritify.us. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comment section. You need to send us, DM us um, on our social media platforms. We have somebody to connect with you. You can go on our website at spiritoffire.us, spiritoffire.us and the contact information, and we'll have somebody to connect with you. And listen, let you know what you need to do to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. Listen, y'all, I'm excited for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, glory to God. Well, now let's, let's make our worship complete. What do we mean by that? Through what we like to call opportunity for prosperity. Even as we begin to give and honor God with our tithes, our offerings, and gifts of love, he says, listen, bring unto me all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat or supply in my house. OK, where's the supply? Where's the storehouse? The place, the local church, the place of supply, the place where you're being fed and developed and nourishing the things of God. If that's if that's us for you and, and we've been feeding you spiritually, we qualify as a storehouse for you to, to sow you and to plant and to give your tithes in. And to also, if you feel as though, okay, anything over and above the tithe is an offering. And you may have a church home and you got pastors. Listen, go ahead and take your tithe to your church home and to help build that vision. But what if and as you're led, you're so an offering here. Whatever God is telling you to do. Whatever he's telling you to do, do it. Sincerely pray and ask the Spirit of God, what would you have for me to do? I know what it's like to break those choking points when God tells you to sow. And it's like, whoo, okay. Uh, but what do you do? 
I meditate on the word. I build myself up and say what the promise of the word is in this area and release that seed into the ground. And I declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus, that same grace is upon you that you will begin to flow. You're going to break through choking points now in Jesus name. Break it, break it and obey quickly what God is telling you to do. Sometimes you got to obey immediately so that you don't talk yourself out of it. What is God telling you to do? So. Obey the spirit of God. There's some information on your screen as to different ways in which you can sow and give. And we pray and believe God with you for supernatural increase, promotion, great favor, debt cancellations. I'm expecting the God of the surprise to show up this week and grant you some surprises. Some cancellations of some debts. He's now turning the hearts of men and women to favor you now. I receive that myself. Yep. Policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on our behalf. We win battles. We don't have to fight. God already, he's already settling things for us. He already speaking to the hearts of people on your behalf now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. I pray you got something out of this today. <laughs> You're like, man, did I? Ooh, Jesus. I got blessed. Glory to God. Well, if it don't go, then can't come back. So, uh, amen. Well, I want to go ahead and release the final blessing over you today. May the grace of God rest heavy upon you. May you enjoy life to, in abundance to the full till it overflows. May great favor rest upon you. May great health and strength be upon you. Great peace be your portion in the name that's above every name. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I command increase upon you. I command restoration upon you. And I declare a refreshing in you. And I hear this word reunion. There'll be a reunion with some people. You will reconnect with some people that you haven't talked to in a minute. And God is gonna do something with those relationships. But notice there's a restoring, there's a restorative process that's happening in people's lives. And it's all for the glory of God. Cause just like you've been praying, they've been praying. And God is saying, I'm gonna come back for the original intent that this relationship was meant for. Glory to God. And it'll bring God glory and bring you joy in the process. Hallelujah. Well, y'all, on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we want to say we love you guys. We appreciate you so much. But we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. God bless you all. I love you so much. See you next time. Don't eat too much today, but enjoy the day. Enjoy your families. God bless you. Peace. <laughs>